so we're dealing with this topic of spiritual warfare and trying to help people get set free uh, uh, from demonic influences and we've seen this growth in Europe and in America in fact all around the world of people getting involved in spirit contact, in conjuring their own demons. We see an incredible rise even in the Nordic religions with their faith in Thor and Odin and the, the magic and the shamanism that, that goes along with that. Um, interestingly, I, I saw this earlier on in, in, on Wikipedia that David Walden says Roughly 10 million Wiccan related books were sold by American Booksellers Association um, a while ago. And we see this incredible growth in the States. Uh, we've noticed in one of their census, one of the, the United St States Census Bureau um, found that there were 342,000 Wiccans in America and 340,000 pagans in the USA in 2008 and I would say this has grown rapidly. I would reckon it's the trend. I don't see it stopping. It's going up and I don't know any of the, the latest statistics but I do know if we get involved in these things then um, we're going to open up doorways to danger and there's always this link I find it, when you look at witchcraft uh, between um, the United States and the UK. Um, the, the, the gentleman uh, Raymond Buckland, he took Wicca to America in, in 1964 after he was initiated by Gerald Gardner, an Englishman, in 1954. So, we see this incredible rise uh, of, of, of Wicca and of paganism and so what are some of the possible spiritual problems that a person can get if they've been dabbling in Wicca or witchcraft, even druidry. Um, and one of the things I've discovered is with people is sometimes they have a fear of looking in the mirror. You know, they, they, they say their face changes in the mirror. I'm afraid to look at the mirror or I, I'm walking along I just fall into this trance or I feel this wind that moves around me and through me. Um, sometimes they, they, people have even said they, they feel like everything's just slowed down around them and everything is in slow motion and that's very surreal. Uh, deja vu gets more and more common the more a person starts opening up their psyche and uh, contacting the, the, the spirits. Another thing could be hearing voices. It could be mental illness, could be a psychotic break, uh, could, could be schizophrenia, but it can be demonic. And I've prayed with a number of people now who say I'm hearing voices and the voices have stopped they've gone. Um, another symptom is can be an unexplained fear, knowing that someone's in the room but you can't see them, poltergeist activity, uh, seeing deceased people uh, around the place. Um, some people have uh, even uh, have seen and I know I've seen it myself like like animals in the spirit realm, half human, half animal. Um, sometimes people say they have an angel sitting on their shoulder every night or they see this angel walk through the, the, the room or even simply a mist in the kitchen and that's a very quick list of some of the stuff that, that people have, have shared with me and we've discovered that those were actually spiritual problems. Um, a few more problems could be they can't read the Bible. If a person's got a spirit in them or a spirit that's trying to oppress them, what we've discovered is their Bible reading goes out the window. They, they don't want to pray. They don't want to go to church. 
and sometimes you'll ask them to say the name of Jesus and they can't even say the name of our Lord or they sit in the church service and you suddenly see that they they get up and, and they walk out because they feel so agitated um, another thing we see is they can be uh, angry at the preacher a sudden hate for for other Christians a hatred towards Christian symbolism uh, become very uh, vulnerable and, and, and afraid uh, sometimes they will struggle to keep control of themselves so what do you do when somebody may have highlighted one of those areas in that list well one of the things you have to do is get the background check the background that's what our Lord Jesus Christ did you know in Mark 9 20 to 22 it says and they brought him unto him and they brought to him unto him and when he saw him straight away the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming and he asked his father how that Jesus is asking that question and he asked his father how long is it ago since this came unto him and he said of a child and oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help so what's Jesus doing here he's getting the background and this child has been thrown in the fire and the water uh, this person has been thrown in the fire and the water since they were a child I mean this is heartbreaking to think that a demon can have that influence over a child to destroy them and, and that makes me annoyed to be honest so what Jesus is doing is he's getting the background so we too we can ask have you ever dabbled in spiritual things have your parents been into spiritual things you know did the mum and dad do the Ouija boards uh, tarot cards did they have seances in the house how about your grandparents were they into spiritual things were they a part of some druidic order or, or the temple of set um, do you have occultic items in, 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 in your house you know occultic artwork um, again you know you can have the, the North Norse myth mythology um, Asgard paintings and ravens and and that that somebody's done a, a magical uh, like a magical blessing over um, and of course that needs to be confessed and uh, that needs to be repented of and so we need to confess um, what we have and get rid of it and we need to repent and repent means to change your mind so that means I'm not going to do the Ouija board any longer I'm going to go to the Lord Jesus Christ I'm going to go to my Heavenly Father and if we confess our sins 1 John um, 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness how wonderful that is when you may have offered a sacrifice you may have sacrificed a chicken or or, or, or um, even a puppy or a cat or something like that uh, to Satan and if you repent that you're not going to do it any longer and you confess that to the Lord he's going to be quick to forgive you and that's freedom we don't deserve this but there is freedom to do that uh, and what I often encourage people to do is, is have a fire service and that is we would take the items that have been used in the occult uh, for magic or for contacting the spirits and with the fire services that we burn those things like they did in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 19 many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver 
when these new people when the when there were these new converts they didn't want to have anything to do with their pagan with their wiccan with their witchcraft past they burnt these things they destroyed it interestingly uh, a friend of mine they were having a fire service and they were throwing all the the satanic books and the doctrine of devils then into the fire accidentally the minister threw the new testament into the fire and the new testament got thrown back out of the fire you know god's word is, is powerful and one of the things that's just amazing that, that that would actually happen but it did and uh, one of the things I'll often ask people to do in, in their confession in their repentance and when they get rid of their stuff is I ask them to read Psalm 51 verses 9 to 13 hide thy face from my sins blot out all my iniquities create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Praise God. And sometimes if somebody's been into a gross sexual sin. Or they've been into spirit contact they will struggle to say those words they might feel a bit of a choking um, they might just feel a resistance they, they, they might start to cry they might start to get very upset it's a powerful psalm of cleansing Psalm 51 and you see sometimes what you get is you get these reactions to ministry and often a person will struggle to speak I've seen people go blind, go mute um, when we're ministering. They might fall to the floor. They might start reaching and begin to vomit. They may scream. You may hear animal sounds coming from their body. They may become animal-like. I remember one person, his face began to change. It almost looked like a dog, like a wolf. His face um or like it's like his jaws almost like dislocated and he became very wolf-like um, it I don't I can't explain it I can't put it into words but his whole face just began to change and, and look like a dog sometimes a person begins to shake violently uh, they may even speak to you in in foreign languages and I, I've seen this happen with, with different ones a person may try to attack you, laugh at you, mock at you, uh, intimidate you, uh, may even speak in a different voice. You might have a, I don't know, a, a, you know, a very petite, five foot lady, very polite, very educated and sophisticated. And next minute there's this gruff, rough old voice bellowing out of her. Um, blaspheming and swearing and cursing and you know that's that's not her that's just some demonic spirit that needs to be cast out we do see as well supernatural strength within different people again seeing the, the smallest of people remove the strongest of men out of their way um, sometimes you find the atmosphere suddenly changes it can, can be very cold it can be very hot as well um, sometimes a person will go to sleep if the person goes to sleep just check that's not a death spirit at work and again you need to be discerning because the peop the person might be absolutely exhausted um, from maybe sharing some of the emotional abuse and s spiritual abuse that they've gone through the person might go into a trance um, and they might get pains in the body um, may even just start to laugh at you and mock you. You know, when it's demonic, they they get agitated, uh, become can become very angry and violent, and may have supernatural abilities of knowing things about you and your situation, 
um, that nobody else knows and they will speak it out you know as with one in one situation and and the, the person turns around and he says to different ones who they're having an affair with normally if it's mental illness generally people tend to just quieten down uh, uh, and go calm um, if it's demonic yeah they might go calm but at some point they're going to explode the devil will always expose himself, reveal himself, if, if he's at, at work. Um, a person who's, who, who's mentally ill won't have supernatural abilities to know things about you. Won't be able to, um, how can I put it? Uh, oh, my mind's gone blank. It's so warm here. Uh, yeah, the, they, they won't be able to... Um, how can I put it, know things about you that they haven't learnt, they won't be able to speak in German or Dutch or some Native American Indian language that, that they haven't learnt, whereas someone who who's dem has demons, they they can just come out and speak in, in Latin or or in some African dialect that they've, they've never uh, learnt before. Um, so after deliverance Pray for the person that all openings to the spirit realm will be closed. That the blood of Jesus will be over those doorways and no spirit can come back through. Have the person to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings of their body, soul and spirit. And pray for them. Put your hands on them and pray for the glorious filling of the Holy Spirit. That they get filled with the glory of, of the Lord so that they can live the Christian life, so they can resist temptation and have godly, a godly character. Now, after you've ministered deliverance to that person, sometimes what you can feel is a joy. And you can, all, you can experience a sense of freedom and liberty yourself in the Lord. Um, when, when you look at the person who's been delivered, they may even physically look different. Sometimes we've seen demons come out of people and they've been physically healed at the same time. A person may be physically tired afterwards and, and they may just want to go home and have a shower and, and have a sleep. Very often when there's a strong demonic presence, they'll have no idea what's going on. They may have shouted and kicked and made a bit of a fuss and they'll have no memory of that whatsoever. Another person might remember and say I had no control of what was going on. A person may also need some help in understanding what they've just gone through and what they've experienced and sometimes a person may need a bit more ministry and sometimes they might need some counselling um, as well as deliverance. Very often a person who's just gone through deliverance they, they may need some support, they might need some biblical teaching uh, on how to fight back and how to walk the Christian walk and talk the Christian talk in following the Lord Jesus. Now, the per now, if you've just ministered deliverance to a person, you may know the joy and the strength of the Lord in a fresh way. It, sometimes it is just so refreshing uh, as, as the Lord comes in, sets the person free, liberates them, so he also refreshes you and fills you with the Holy Spirit. That does happen. Sometimes after the deliverance, as you're walking away, as you're walking back home or driving back home, or you're on your own, you might just hear a voice call you. It's the Spirit trying to get a hook, get a hold on, on, on you. And of course you just rebuke that. Um, sometimes you, you can, when you're in the battle, you can become have a low spirit yourself. You can become a bit depressed, a bit oppressed yourself. Of course, you then you need to fight back because you're engaging in the battle in intercession for that person to be free. 
Sometimes you can just dwell on the negative aspects. Sometimes there might be family troubles. Sometimes the deliverance minister might become proud. Um, but we're to rejoice in the Lord that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes, we give thanks that the spirits are under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes the deliverance minister comes under demonic attack themselves, especially when you're dealing with, with somebody coming out of a large group, satanic group, or a person who's been so immersed and traumatized and has gone through so much, um, those spirits will not want to let go uh, very easily or quickly. So Christ is triumphant. This is a this is just the whirlwind talk on on ministering and helping to set people free from the works of the devil. He's a personal devil, but he's defeated by a personal Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just pray. Father God, you are our victory. You are our strength. Protect us, Lord, who minister to those who are afflicted by the preternatural. Give us your power. Give us your grace, we pray. May we walk in your spirit and have wisdom in everything that we do and much discernment. We love you, Lord. Let your kingdom come, we pray. And may the captives be set free. Amen. God bless you. I'd love to hear from you. And may the hand of the Lord rest upon you.